People often cite the golden age of bodybuilding as the pinnacle of the sport because it combined beauty and bulk without becoming excessive. And we're talking about the people like Franco Colombo, Sergio Oliva, Lou Ferrigno, and of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We experimented with nutrition. We experimented with training, not just training and nutrition just pull out of the sky. In my days, we were not as sophisticated when it comes to dieting, uh, and we didn't have the food supplements that are available today with getting definition and you know cutting down and all those things. We had food supplements that were really good for gaining weight, but we didn't really have much available to lose weight. So to me, my way of really getting defined and getting kind of a really mature definition rather than just dropping quickly 10 pounds or 15 pounds with a watermelon diet or something like that. Back at the time in the 70s, we had what you call the meat and water diet. When I trained for competition, I'll have maybe like meat, fish, egg, water, maybe one piece of food a day, like a starvation diet. Of course, you get rid of competition, but you feel so dehydrated, so tired. We just ate, you know, four or five times a day, more beef than the guys are eating today. Um, eggs, you know, salads, bread. We didn't really kind of go on this, you know, extreme, heavy, restrictive diet. We lived in Santa Monica, three blocks from the beach, and we used to live together. We had two bedrooms, a little apartment, and in the morning was like he was the guy that 6:30. We got up like a military guy, no one was in the military, he knows all the disciplines. He gets up 6.30, Franco, get up, do the protein drink. And I'm going like this, you know, putting the eggs in the protein drink. Then we would go there, drink the protein drink, get in the car and go to the gym. It was like a continuous routine for years and paid off later that we were the best of all times in bodybuilding with no question. Remember, the competitors back then didn't really go into all-out bulks in the off-season like they do today. They stayed lean and trim year-round. Serge said, Look at the cows. They eat all day. Now, look at the panthers. They eat once a day. Which one is in better shape? So basically, Serge's belief was that eating less frequently actually resulted in being leaner and more muscular. Although intermittent fasting is a nutritional strategy that has gained a lot of popularity in recent times, Serge Mubray had actually been utilizing a similar nutrition approach back in the 70s. So now Serge did have a few key foods he would eat and it would actually only be these few foods that he would eat every single day. The diet consisted of an average of 4 kilos of red meat a day, rice, beans and lentils. That's it. So Serge consumed around 800 grams of protein a day. Again, not measured but according to Serge this is what a typical day of eating would turn out to be. One third of my plate covered with salmon, one third of my plate covered with the complex carbohydrate, which is the rice. Other third of the plate, I'm gonna cover that with a baby spinach and arugula salad. I grew up in the country where, you know, sweet potatoes and yams was the mainstay. 
so was pinto beans, so was corn, so was chickens, so was eggs. So all of the good quality nutrients were there from day one. And so by implementing the training principles, good basic nutritional principles, I was able to imitate what I had read about and my physique continued to grow and get better and better. So we knew what carbs, car carbohydrates are the life force of the physique to get a nice pump. Protein was there to repair cell and tissue and be a good quality muscle. If you have more protein and not carbohydrates, then you're not going to fill out and develop as you should. We had this little tablet where we would write down what we ate in the course of a day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. You know, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbohydrate. So that uh, as we looked better, we were able to go back and, and figure out why we were looking better. If we looked a bit flat, we could go back scientifically and say, oh man, look, I, I've only had 100 grams of carbs. I feel a bit sluggish. So guess what? I need to increase my carbohydrate intake. If you train hard and eat properly, you too can be totally awesome. I think that I learned that don't get out of shape in the off season. If you do, if you do get out of shape, you're going to lose a lot of time getting back there. So stay where you're at. And for me, I learned not to bulk up. Don't do that. You know, it just meant getting fatter than having to lose that. That's just time lost. But try to stay lean in the off season. I would restrict carbohydrates as I got closer to competition. Typically, I would get a little bit more than one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So. Let's say I was training at 200 pounds of body weight. I would get maybe 240 grams of protein a day, spread throughout the day, fish, poultry. Uh, I did eat a lot of red meat in those days, uh, you know, uh, red meat that didn't have a lot of fat attached to it. Carbohydrates, I usually kept my carb intake about half of my protein intake or less. There were some extreme times, like in 1976, I was eating seven meals a day and each meal was basically combination of protein and carbohydrates, a little bit of fat.